Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It is Drew here from Lone Fox, and today we have a super, super exciting video because if you guys did not know, Halloween is probably one of my absolute favorite holidays. I think it's one of the most nostalgic ones for me for some reason. It's the one that I can remember the most of, and it's like the ones that I have the best memories of. I just really, really love the month of October for some reason. So this month for me is really, really exciting, and I asked you guys over on Instagram and on my YouTube community tab if you wanted to see a Halloween decor DIY video. And so many people were like, yes, please 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 do it and I to myself was like I've never done a Halloween DIY video so let's go ahead and do that for you guys today and if you are not already make sure to subscribe to my channel it is 100% free click that little red subscribe button down below and also click the bell icon next to it that way you are notified every time that I upload a brand new video which is normally about twice a week so you don't want to miss out on a really fun Lone Fox content so today I'm going to be doing five DIY Halloween decor ideas and I feel like a lot of the times you can go to the stores and you can buy your generic kind of cheesy Halloween decor that's scary whatever it might be I'm sure a lot of you guys know exactly what stores offer during Halloween Halloween time. However, it is really hard to find aesthetically pleasing, really, really cute Halloween decor for your space if you do like that more elevated look, and that is exactly what I want to give you guys today. And last but not least, don't forget to follow me over on Instagram. It is Lone Fox Home. It's really, really fun over there, and you can also check out my online store. It is LoneFox.com, um, where I sell home goods and DIY supplies. There's actually currently a promotion running right now. Get 10% off using code AUTUMN at checkout. But let's jump into these really cute Halloween DIY decor ideas. <laughs> Alrighty guys, so jumping into our first project here, we are going to be using two glass faces from the dollar store, and I'm also going to be using a ton of hot glue. The supplies for this project are super minimal, but we will be needing a lot of hot glue, so make sure you have some spare sticks on hand. So what we're going to be doing is actually creating a faux drip texture to the top exterior of this vase here, which then is going to be painted over and kind of looks like a dripping candle in a sense. So I'm going around and using my hot glue to create these drips. You can actually just apply a lot of it and kind of let it run down itself, or you can create them if you kind of hold it horizontally to your table and this is what it should look like when you're completely done adding those drips on there and you're going to be repeating the process on your second base or your third base however many you want to create and this is what both of mine ended up looking like however once you add your first layer I think it's really nice to go in and add a second and even a third layer on top of your drips that way it looks like the wax has been building up over time and it just looks a little bit more realistic I found these packs of holiday votives and they had battery operated tea lights in them so I pulled those to the side and I'm going to be using a bit of matte black spray paint which I'm just going to spray into the lid and then paint onto all of the white portions of this tea light candle that way it blends in with our final candle once it is completely done. Just make sure not to paint the flame of course. Once those are all done, I grabbed a couple of popsicle sticks and I'm going to be cutting these down to be the interior width of our vase. So I cut off one end, then I'm measuring it and kind of cutting off the second end and this is going to fit perfectly on the inside. And we're basically creating like a little pedestal for our tea light to sit on because I want to elevate it towards the top as opposed to having it towards the bottom there. So our tea light will sit on there nicely and I'm going to repeat the same process to the second vase. And once you're all done with that, these are ready for a coat of spray paint. So bring them outside and give a generous coat of matte black spray paint, making sure to hit all the little crevices, all the cracks, and that really finishes off these tea light holders. They're super cute and also very modern at the same time. Pretty sure you guys all know by now that I love a good wreath. Whether it is Christmas time, fall time, summertime, whatever it is, I always create a themed wreath. So we're gonna be doing a Halloween one today. So I found these really great kind of like tree branch style stems at Joann's Fabrics in the Christmas section and I got them for 50% off. And I brought them outside and I'm going to be again giving them a nice coat of black spray paint, making sure to honestly give them like a double coat because you're gonna to wanna to hide all of that glitter. However, the glitter on the underside creates a really fun texture. So this is what they look like once they're all dry and I'm going to be using three of these ones that were previously silver as kind of the base for my wreath and then I'm going to add more as I go. So I'm going to curve all three of them around and kind of place them around the exterior rim and by the way guys this wreath form that I'm using is from the Dollar Tree. 
In order to secure down my first layer on any wreath, I really like to use wire, and I add a couple pieces of wire on each stem just to make sure that it's fastened securely to the base, um, as opposed to hot glue, because sometimes hot glue can come free. I like gluing on top of my first layer, but my first layer is always wired down. So I wired down all of these pieces using a little bit of a thin wire that I found in the floral section at Michael's. So that's what I'm doing here. This is looking awesome so far, but I do want to make it just a little bit more full. So with my other stems that kind of look a little bit more like tree branches, which I love, I think these really, really elevated the look and just filled it in. Um, I'm going to be kind of picking them off and cutting them at different lengths and sizes just to fill in any section that I feel like needs a little bit more fullness. And this really is going to elevate your wreath and just make it look a lot more expensive and overall just make it appear a lot prettier if you guys know what I'm talking about. So that finishes off this wreath. You can give another coat of spray paint if you feel like you need to, but I'm really excited with how this piece turned out. Now, I know not everybody is into those scary Halloween decorations, so this is a super, super cute alternative option if you just want to add a little bit of holiday cheer to your home. So I'm going to start off by grabbing a couple pieces of holiday fabric. These are actually fat quarters from Joann's Fabrics. So I got these in a couple variating colors, just in oranges and blacks to make a nice, pretty aesthetic in the end. And I'm going to be cutting them down to nine inch by nine inch squares. These are going to be for the smaller styrofoam balls. And then the larger squares are going to be about 13 inches by 13 inches. And those are for our larger styrofoam balls. To create the little ghost, all I'm doing is adding a bit of hot glue, placing it down on the wrong side of the fabric, and then adding more glue around the styrofoam ball, and literally just overlaying it on top and pulling the fabric down. Now, you can totally go ahead and add a string and kind of tighten it as you would for a tassel. However, I didn't want it to have that like cinched look where it kind of comes in on the tassel, you know? I wanted the fabric more so to look like it's flowing and just falling off of a circular shape. So this is kind of like the head of the ghost, if you will, and then everything's kind of falling down words is more so I guess the ghost's clothing. I don't really know what you call this part of the ghost, the ghost's body, but um, I'm just going around adding hot glue and just pulling the fabric down. You kind of want to let gravity do its thing and just let the fabric fall and then glue it and then pull it down and let it fall into place. And then once you're done, you're pretty much done. That's how you're going to be creating these ghosts. It's super, super simple, but I created, I think about nine of them. Now that we have all of our ghosts, it is time to string them onto a string to create the garland. So I got an embroidery needle and some string, and I'm just going to kind of just pick at the top of the fabric and go through just a tiny little piece there, and then tie it into a single knot right on top to secure that ghost into place. And in between each of the ghosts, I actually ended up using about nine inches of string. So I brought out a ruler, measured nine inches, and then I strung through on my next ghost. Again, just going through just a little bit of that fabric on the top side where the styrofoam ball is, and then I brought it over to my ruler there and made sure that there was a nine inch spacing in between each of them and then tied it into a simple little single knot. And you're just gonna repeat this all the way down until you have all of your ghosts strung onto your garland. Project number four is probably the quickest, simplest, easiest, fastest, and most inexpensive project I've ever done here on my channel, but sometimes those are the best ones, I think. So what I'm gonna start off by doing is actually hot gluing the bottom side of one of these spider web bowls that I found at the Dollar Tree, and I'm going all the way around just making sure that I add a generous amount of hot glue on the bottom, and then I'm going to be gluing on top of that the second bowl. Now this is going to be creating a kind of like tiered bowl, which is similar to that terracotta candle that I created that everyone loved in my Dollar Tree video but I'm also giving this a nice coat of matte black spray paint because the bowls were kind of like a glossy plastic and I wanted them to be a little bit more matte. I just thought it would look quite nice with this bowl shape. So I went around and I sprayed it with a matte black finish and that finishes off this really cute spiderweb candy bowl. A 
few weeks back on Instagram, I shared with you guys this really cute Starry Night rattan style pumpkin that I created for a little Instagram pumpkin swap that I was doing, and I thought why not also do a video tutorial on it. So our final project is how to create this pumpkin. So I'm starting off with one of these faux foam carvable pumpkins. Now this one guys is from Joann's, however I do not suggest this one. It was so challenging to cut through. I got my last one at Michael's and I can tell you it was so much easier to cut through. I don't know what it is, if it was made of a different foam or something, but the Michael's one is much, much, much easier. So what I started off by doing, which I know I've kind of already gotten into this a little bit, but I'm going to be cutting out a ton of different star shapes. And then I also wanted to add a little moon as well, a little crescent moon. So that is what I'm tracing out here. I just kind of freehand everything. However, I do have a pack of star cookie cutters that I kind of use as a reference for some of the larger star shapes, but any of the smaller stars, I honestly just kind of create your generic star that you learned in elementary school. And then I cut it out. So I just did a whole ton of stars all the way around, tracing them in tons of different various shapes and sizes just to get a nice variety and kind of make it again look like a little starry night. Now I actually had to make all of the cuts off camera because the angle I was filming at and the strength of this foam pumpkin was just not allowing me to cut them. So I ended up cutting all of the shapes off camera um, and it took me about half an hour to do so. The thing I love about these pumpkins is that you can reuse them each year, which is amazing. So then what I did was I grabbed some black acrylic paint and put it in a little container there and added a bit of baking soda to create that really nice ceramic paint that everyone's been doing lately. And this just gives kind of like a ceramic finish to the outside of your pumpkin. Now you can totally leave it orange if you'd like to. However, I wanted to go in and do a black one this time because my first one that I created for Instagram was actually like a creamy white tone. So I thought having a black one and just doing a little bit of a variation so you guys can see two different colorways of this pumpkin would be really, really nice. So I went on and painted a generous coat of this black paint, which again is that kind of ceramic finish baking soda vibe, which we all have been loving lately. And of course, you can't forget to paint the little top section as well. I just used a smaller brush for this to get a nice detailed edge alongside of the stem there. And next, what I did was I grabbed a little bit of this rattan material, which you guys all know I use in a lot of my projects. I get it at a local shop here in Los Angeles. And I'm using, I first started off with a bit of crazy glue, which honestly did not work at all. And it got all over my fingers, which was quite annoying. So what I ended up doing, which is what I did with my first pumpkin, was I actually just used sewing pins. So I bring the rattan material inside and I grab a couple of sewing pins and I secure it at all four corners into the foam material. Now you're gonna have to use a faux candle in this anyway, so the sewing pins cannot be seen, and that really finishes off this really cute Starry Night pumpkin. And you made it to the end. I hope that you guys enjoyed those Halloween DIY decor ideas as much as I loved creating them for you. They were so much fun and I'm really, really excited to decorate my mantle with them. A lot of them I actually think are gonna go on my mantle area because it's a pretty focal prominent point in my living room. I really love how these pieces to me kind of feel timeless. They're definitely pieces you can keep for year after year and you're never gonna get bored of them because they're very simple, but of course very Halloween-y and perfect to decorate for the season. I love the word Halloween-y by the way. And also we cannot forget how budget friendly these are. Almost every Every single project was made using pieces from the Dollar Tree, so you're also saving a little bit because I know not everyone wants to spend on Halloween decor. So this is just a little way to add a bit of festivity to your home while also saving a little bit of money. And yes, yeah, so that finishes off today's video. I hope that you guys enjoy these projects. I absolutely love the way they turned out and I wanna thank you guys so much for joining me today. I hope you're having an amazing October as well. And do not forget to also subscribe to my channel where I post brand new home decor and DIY content every single week. You can also follow me over on Instagram at Lone Fox Home and shop my home decor store at lonefox.com. Don't forget to use code autumn for 10% off and I will catch you guys all in my next video. Have an amazing rest of your day. Bye everyone.